that and I will present. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I just wanted to show you this progress photo. This is a client that is working with me currently. She has seen amazing progress. She's doing awesome. And she actually just, this is about 10 weeks between her photos. Her goal was just to kind of, you know, lean out a little bit, but focus on muscle and gaining muscle, building strength. So she's had amazing progress. She actually just resigned. She's going to do another three months with, with us. And I'm really excited. We're focusing on PRs and personal bests is what PR is. And just, you know, focusing on building up muscle. So these are her progress photos. Her goal is to build her booty. And this is one thing we've been working on together. And one thing you have to remember guys is that progress does take time and it's definitely gonna be different for everyone. Um, but this is 10 weeks before, or 10 weeks between these photos. And um, like I said, it's gonna be, de depending on your metabolism and caloric intake is kind of depending, you know, how your body's gonna respond to workouts. And I'm gonna kind of talk about today, like how you can try and see progress faster with glute growth. Oops, that's the wrong way, okay. Okay, so first of all, let's start with caloric intake. What exactly is caloric intake? And this is just going to be how many calor calories you consume in a day. So we must consume more calories than we burn in order to put on muscle mass because our body requires lots of energy and food to be putting on any muscle mass. So you must be eating more than your maintenance calories to put on muscle. Okay. So this means if you're not eating enough food throughout the day and you're working your butt off in the gym, literally, and trying to gain a booty and you're not seeing results. One thing I can tell you is you're most likely not eating enough food, which sounds crazy, but we'll go over this a little bit. So understanding what BMR is, BMR is going to be your basal metabolic rate. So calories that your body burns at rest. So I suggest starting off by just tracking a day of eating um, or a week of eating, listening to hunger cues and see how many calories on average you eat in a day. Honestly, guys, a lot of my one-on-one -on -one clients do this because we start off with, I don't just throw calories at people and I'm like, try and eat this many calories. That's not how it works. I will fully have them track calories for a few days, see where their metabolism is, see if they have proper hunger cues. And if I see they're eating, which usually it's how it starts is they're eating 1100, sometimes 900 calories a day. And they don't understand why they, why they can't lose body fat. And this is just because eating so little has actually slowed their metabolism down. So their body's not going to focus on putting on muscle mass at all. It's actually just going to slow your metabolism down and then make it hard for you to build muscle. You're probably going to be actually burning muscle when you're exercising because your body's just trying to search for an energy source. Okay, this keeps going backwards, sorry. Okay, so under eating, like I said, if you're consuming 900 calories a day, 1100 calories, that is under eating because this is going to be not enough calories that your body actually is burning. So um, under eating makes it really hard for us to put on muscle and under eating will cause you to lose muscle mass and affects met metabolism in the long term. I kind of just said that. Um, so do you need to eat more? Yes. Does eating more lead to fat gain? No. One thing guys is, I know it's really hard to really understand how much you should be eating. And this is what, what Kayla and I do with our clients is say a client comes to us and they're eating 1100 calories a day. We focus on increasing their calories just by a little bit each week, because we want to get them to a good maintenance calories where their body is like getting comfortable with eating more. And then it's like, okay, I don't need to pull from muscle mass. I don't need to slow the metabolism down. I'm getting enough food that I can actually start to put on muscle. Then when you put on muscle, you're going to be burning way more calories at rest. So making sure you're eating enough of the right foods, this like breaks it down into macros. Are you eating enough protein? Are you eating enough carbs? Are you eating enough healthy fats? Okay. You must increase your protein intake because protein is going to help us put on muscle mass and repair muscle that's torn when you exercise. Okay. So when you exercise, you're actually making little micro tears in the muscle. Protein is what rebuilds that and helps the muscle build and grow like the glutes. Um, so going forward, um, I, this is my story. I'm actually eating more than I ever have in my whole life. 
Um, I also weigh more than I ever have in my whole life. And I feel and look way better than I have in my whole life. Um, and this is because I've gotten my calories or my maintenance calories and my BMR to so high that I can eat whatever food I want and not see fat gain. Yes, I go through phases where I have more body fat than, than normal. That's like depending on like if I'm eating more, eating less, all that. But my goal over time, like I go through calorie surplus all the time currently right now um, because I'm focusing on building muscle mass. And then I may go through a small cut where I cut my calories a little bit um, just to look a little bit leaner maybe for the summer. But as you can see in these photos, I was really tiny. All I was doing in the first photo was like orange theory. Honestly, I was doing hit exercises constantly. I was running a lot, um, focusing on being skinny. And honestly, until I changed my mindset and focused on lifting heavier and feeling confident and all of that, I started to see such a huge change. I started eating more. I started increasing my protein intake. And now I've seen such a huge difference in my glutes. So going into macros guys are macros are going to be your carbs protein and fats i did go over this on the last lecture so if you missed it i can send you the slides for it because we went over nutrition and progressive overload during the last community call but protein guys is going to be a macronutrient used to put on muscle mass and this is just very specific to growing your glutes because we need enough protein in order to put on muscle so some examples of proteins are going to be like meat beans, eggs. Um, my favorite protein sources are going to be like whey protein, lean turkey, chicken, eggs, egg whites. Um, some of my favorite like high protein meals, I'll make like cauliflower rice, brown rice, chicken sausage, veggies, and mix it all together, put an egg on top. And it's usually like at least 25 grams of protein and that's gonna be my lunch. So I really focus on high protein meals. Um, I still eat lots of carbs. You want carbs for energy guys. So make sure you're not cutting all carbs. You don't have to be cutting foods um, out of your diet. One thing that um, I preach and Kayla preaches about to our one-on-one -on -one clients is you can still eat foods that you love because it fits in that calorie breakdown. You know, if you're trying to put on muscle, yes, you need to be increasing your protein intake, but it doesn't mean you can't go out on a Saturday night and have French fries or nachos or something like that. You still have to find what's going to work for you and what's going to be sustainable. So I um, highly suggest maybe taking a screenshot of this. Like I said, if you want to um, see this again, I can email it to you. Just send me an email. Um, so how to determine, to determine your maintenance calories, how many calories you should be eating, okay? I don't suggest though that you go into my fitness pal and put this in. Like I said, I suggest talking with a coach, email me, um, ask me questions because if you're only eating 900 calories and then you go in and you calculate your maintenance calories and you say, or it says that you should be eating 1600 calories. If you all of a sudden jump to 1600 calories, your body's going to be like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And likely it's going to store all of those extra, extra calories. So this is why we put our clients through a, rever a reverse and it's safe to do with a coach because they slowly will increase your calories for you and help your metabolism get rebuilt. Um, that's kind of how it works. So what you want to do is take your body weight, multiply it by 12. You can always multiply it by 13 if you're more active. Okay, that's going to give you higher calories because you're burning more calories. Um, this will give you your maintenance calories. If your goal is to put on muscle, you want to add about 200 calories to this goal. So you want to be eating in a surplus because this is going to help you put on muscle mass. Okay, so, so now you need to know how much you should be eating. Focus on the protein intake. You want to get about 30% of your diet to consist of protein. So say you calculate those calories and you get a 1,600 calories, 30% of your calories should be coming from protein. There's four calories per gram of protein. I know this is confusing, 
and it's getting a little bit in depth here, but like I said, this is what we went over in the last webinar. So if you want me to email that to you, I definitely can just so you can kind of understand macros a little bit better, but focus on your protein intake, eat about 25 grams of protein at each meal. And even that guys, if you're eating three meals, that's not gonna be enough protein for, for the day. So I have clients who set a goal to eat 60 grams of protein by just lunch. Okay, so you need to try and get in way more protein. Okay, usually we need about like 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, but that's like bare minimum, like dietary recommendation. That's not for putting on muscle mass. So you need to be eating more than that. Um, eat high protein snacks. Um, Bomar Nutrition Protein Powder post-workout. So that adds in an extra 25 grams of protein to your day. So if you do a breakfast, 25 grams of protein, then say you have a 15 gram protein snack that comes from Greek yogurt with high protein granola on top. Um, then you go work out, you come home, have half of a banana with a Bomar Nutrition Protein Powder shake. Then you're already at what, 50 plus 15, 65 grams of protein and you haven't eaten lunch yet. That's ideal, okay? Because then you're gonna have lunch, 25 grams of protein. There you're gonna be at 85 grams. Then you're gonna have another snack, dinner, all of that. I know I'm kind of going down the rabbit hole with this, but I'm just trying to reiterate that you do need lots of protein to put on muscle. Okay, now let's talk about exercise and working out. So how should I work out to gain a booty? Uh, you really want to focus on progressive overload. This is going to be increasing the stress on the body or the muscle group in order to see results, okay? Because increasing weight, so say you're going to the gym all the time and you're doing walking lunges with 12 pound dumbbells and you've been doing this for three months and you're like, why do I not see more muscle in my legs? This is because your body's so used to lifting that weight that it's like, oh, okay, like I don't really need to build muscle because I already have enough muscle to lift this weight. So what you have to do is kind of trick your body into lifting heavier, um, increasing the weight, the resistance or frequency of the movements in your training split. Um, something we program for our clients by adjusting protocol. So over time, we'll change the rep count. Um, we will tell them to use resistance bands. We will tell them to lift heavier on certain lifts. Um, they send us form videos of them doing deadlifts. And we're like, hey, you're, that form looks awesome, but I think you could be lifting 30 pound dumbbells instead of 15. And then they go ahead and do that. And they're like, oh, wow, like I feel so much stronger. Then they move that up like week after week. So increasing the weight that you lift in the gym is going to be really important for progressive overload and seeing glute growth. Some exercises that I love for glute growth are squats, deadlifts, and hip thrusts, far stride walking lunges. So that means, yes, regular walking lunges, but taking a little bit further of a stride is going to engage your glute a little bit better. And then rear foot elevated lunges, that's just where you have a bench behind you. They're also called Bulgarian split squats. So you have a bench behind you and one foot is on the bench and the other foot is forward and you're in that lunge position, leaning your chest forward slightly and engaging the glute with every rep. You can lift heavy on all of these lifts, guys, but I highly suggest um, asking someone to look at your form, you can send Kayla and I a video of your form. And, you know, if you're like, hey, like, I'm not sure if my squat form looks right or my deadlift form looks right. Also, this is why we also we have the uh, Facebook group, the Burn Babes Facebook group. This is somewhere you can ask everyone for tips on your form. Um, how does my deadlift form look? I'm really in, like interested in increasing the strength of my hamstrings and I want to lift heavier. Um, so, that's one thing I really suggest. Uh, where did I go? Okay. All right. Another thing is glue activation. So, oops, someone's in the waiting room. Okay. Glute activation. So warming up the glutes to increase the use of the glutes during the exercise. So this would be like using a band. This would be like using a band. Um, this could be doing squats. Um, make sure you're doing acclimation sets when you do squats. That means like starting with the bar and then adding a little bit of weight and then getting to the weight that you're gonna squat with and then doing your sets. So not just jumping under a barbell of the weight that you wanna use and doing your sets. You need to make sure you build it up and we're really focusing on the glute activation, mind muscle connection as well. So think about squatting and like, 
putting your feet into the floor and spreading the floor and standing back up and squeezing your glutes, okay? If you really think about what muscle you're using, your body is going to recruit that muscle more. Sounds crazy, but it's true. When you're doing hip thrust, think about the glute squeeze. Take your time. Don't rush through movements, okay? So super important to do glute activation, especially if you sit all day because you're your booty is actually going to be turned off because it's like, okay, like I don't really need this right now. Um, I don't really need to um, use my glutes right now. So when you get to the gym, uh, make sure you're doing things like banded glute bridges. So this is kind of a lot for a slide, but like I said, you can take a little picture of this with your phone or something, or I'll email it to you. Um, banded glute bridges, so laying on the floor with your feet at 90 degrees, firmly pressing your feet into the ground, lifting your hips, okay? Um, squeeze your booty at the top, hold, and then come back down, perform 15 to 20 reps, but you don't wanna be going to fatigue, so you shouldn't be like burning out your glutes before you're even getting started. Um, same thing with banded lateral steps, a band around your knees. The bands that I love most, I think I put them in the next slide, is Hope Fitness Gear. I actually have a discount code for you guys. It's just burned by hand. I think it gives you 20% off, but it's the red medium band. Um, it's a cloth band because a lot of people use the little rubber bands and they end up breaking or they're not enough resistance. So Stepping to the right eight times, staying nice and low. Stepping to the left eight times, staying nice and low and repeating two to three times. Think about the muscle you're working and think about you know driving your knees out when you squat, pointing your toes out when you squat um, and really, really focusing on the abductors, which is gonna be on the side of your glutes, okay? Um, an iso squat, so just holding a squat and pulsing and glute kickbacks. I'm sure many of you know what those are, but just kicking your leg back in like all when you're on all fours, um, ensuring that your waist is directly below your shoulders or your wrist, sorry, um, and your knees directly below your hips and then kicking your leg back, squeezing in the glute, hold for a second, don't rush through these and then completing about 15 reps. Okay, so one reason and why I've noticed that a lot of people don't see glute growth is because they're number one, under eating. Like we talked about, you have to eat enough to put on muscle, okay? You can't expect your body to be able to put on muscle if you're eating 1200 calories a day. You can't get into the mindset of, I'm focusing on the number on the scale, I'm um, trying to stay a certain size and you know, don't see glute growth because you can't do both at one time, if that makes sense. You have to eat in a surplus in order to put on muscle. Um, a lot of people also don't use progressive overload, so they're not following protocol from a coach, so they don't know what they've lifted in the past. So if you go into the gym tomorrow and you back squat 110 pounds, but you don't remember what you squatted last week, it might have actually been 120 pounds and you're not utilizing progressive overload because you're not lifting any heavier. Um, also, people aren't lifting heavy enough, but one thing you have to remember is you wanna make sure your form is good before lifting heavy. Obviously, we don't want any injuries. And then a lot of people are not following a program. I do have a, a few guides, I think, Taylor has one. Uh, it's the Booty Boot Camp program that's on my website for purchase. Obviously, this isn't going to be personalized to you, um, but it is like glute growth exercises. If you're looking for something that's going to be like the nutrition personalized for you and the workouts personalized for you, that's when you can really, you know, message Kayla or I, tell us you're interested in the program um, because we can personalize a program for you that will help you see results over time. Tracking your progress is really important too. So take photos, take measurements, um, track your personal best so you remember how much you've lifted in the past and hire a coach to build a, build a program for you, just like I said. Um, it's really important that you're tracking your progress, guys, because usually you don't give yourself credit for how far you've come. Sometimes um, I'll have clients who are saying they're really disappointed, they don't feel like they look any different, and then I send them their progress photos, and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is me. Like, what? Like, I had a client tell me yesterday, I can't believe this is my body, just because she compared her photos side to side, and she had been so disappointed in the past, and I'm like, girl, look at your photos. You look amazing. Like, 
like, look at this. And she's like, oh my gosh, no way. Like, yeah, you're right. All I needed to do was compare them side to side. Like, and you have to be confident, be confident in your body, be confident in the progress and the work that you've put in. And I promise that's how you're going to make strides. So just throwing this out there for you guys, we are accepting new one-on-one -on -one clients and people who want to make big changes in their fitness journey. So our link to apply for coaching is in our Instagram bios. Um, you can email me also with any questions and I'll send you this webinar from today. Um, and yeah, I will open up also for questions.